Yo, Ale Raza, welcome back to the channel, ladies and gentlemen. Today, we are finally getting some shocks put on the Bronco. So let's see what we got here. So this is the kit that I ordered from Twisted Metalworks. This is a shock relocation kit for an F-150. Now, this is an F-150, but it's far from stock. So the kit I ordered is the one that has all of these holes, lots of adjustability. So it should allow us to put the shock right where we need it. We also got the Vikings for stock ride height. This was kind of my biggest worry, but well, I just ended up going with stock ride height Vikings. Hopefully they are what we need. Otherwise I may have to order myself something else. So I'm gonna be very careful with these. I'm gonna probably take measurements before I even try and fit them up. That way I don't scratch them. That, that way I can return them if I need to, so. I'm going to start fitting stuff up on the diff and see how we're even going to mount these. Yo, this is crazy. I feel like stuff like this never happens. And you might be thinking, oh, it's an F-150 kit, but no, there's no way because this diff, this isn't the stock location of the diff. The stock location of the diff is like somewhere around here because people sell a kit that bolts to this thing for the stock F-150 guys. Okay, so we got that bar in. I'm, I'm assembling this thing. That way I can see if we can just, I don't know, start doing like some rough, rough mock-up. See what everything looks like, you know? From the looks of it is intended to fit on here like this. Okie dokie, folks. So this is what we're working with here. I had to reshoot all my center lines, replumb bob. If you watched the first video when I did the leaf springs, I had to basically do that again because this chassis moved on me. And if you haven't watched it, well, you can watch it right in one of these corners. But anyways, I found center of the chassis again. Um, you would be surprised how much having center of the chassis helps. It literally basically just works for everything. So... The reason I found center of the chassis was so I can take a measurement from this side and see where I want my shock mounts to go. So these basically, right, are gonna go somewhere in this area. Once I know that where that goes, then I can take my measurement from center line, which I should mark before I lose it. But I take my measurement from there, I'll mark it here, then we shoot our laser and well, I'll show you guys when I get there, but let's mark this for now and figure out where we want these. Okay, so we have our center line. We know where that is. And like I said, now we got to figure out where we want to put those guys. And what I did here is I cut out some, these are just pieces of square tube. They are inch and a quarter, which is the exact width of the shock mount. That way I can bolt this to that and it can hold it in the position where they both have to be welded. Man, see now that that's bolted together, these are basically now one unit. And I got everything cleaned up. The bar is centered uh, where I want it in the chassis. So I'll tack it that way the bar can't move side to side and we'll start putting our shock mounts on. Okay, so I actually went and looked up a video about what the difference is between having your shocks really close together or far apart. And what I found is that when they're close together, they, you know, they can shock absorb really well with up and down motions. But when you spread them further apart, they also help absorb shock in roll motions. Now, while this truck may make a lot of power one day, you know, it's not like a dedicated drag truck or anything. So for drag racing, a roll motion isn't really necessary. You don't really care about it, right? You just want perfect shock absorbment um when your differential is moving up and down but you know since this is something that's going to be driving on the street and things like that i'm actually going to try and spread the the shocks as far as part as as i can i, I don't want to do anything too crazy if you see here you know we're going to run into a, a point where this this bolt's going to be real close to the frame i don't want that to be more of a pain than than it has to be so I'm just gonna spread them 
I don't know, I'm, I'm thinking of doing the four inches and you know, we'll put the four inch mark on the inside and that puts us a few inches from here. So, you know, I mean, I could get pretty close here because it's just the nut that goes there. I don't plan on changing these shocks every weekend either, you know, so it's not in a terrible position. But, you know, four inches, I think is, uh, I think that's a solid uh, place to get started, really. And then if I want to change it or something, I don't know, maybe I'll go in like. something like that kind of as far as I can you know with still being able to fit an open uh, closed end wrench in there yeah see like that right there that's not terrible so if we drop that there that is I mean three inches so we can have a round number but I don't think three inches would work so three and a quarter from here to our mark over here so what I'm doing is measuring from the center to our mark where our shock is going to go on this side and that's going to give us 12 and 14, uh, 13 16 12 and uh oh, 12 and three quarter now that is what i measured to the inside of here so if we inch and a quarter Divide that by two is five eighths. So we gotta add five eighths to that. So from the center of here, if I measure 13 and three eighths, that should line up with the middle of the shock. And then I can put that on the diff. So I'm actually find the center of that. That way I can line up center to center. That makes a lot more sense. Okay, I got a little bit of ahead of myself, but if you can see that right there, I have the laser shot on our measurements we took. I shot it down to the ground and I even shot it all the way on that blue tape just to make it even more accurate. Obviously, the more points you have matching up to that measurement, the more accurate you're going to be squareness and all that. But I tightened up that bracket that holds the shock. And if you look at it here on the bottom, it is it's not tacked or anything. I just it literally fits perfect. These are really nice laser cut pieces so it literally fits perfect on the diff and i just kind of pushed it on there and it's holding itself but as you as you can see you know the laser is shooting right down that sucker so i mean i think what i'm gonna do is just level it make sure it's at zero just because i think that's a good spot for it to be it shouldn't it doesn't need to have any angle in it you know if the shock has a little angle in it afterwards that's not a big deal but uh, you know, I'm going to just zero it out and I'm going to tack it right there. And then I'll set up the top one and our shock should technically go in. Now, I pre-configured it to my calculation. So shocks from Viking, they are, I ordered them. So basically I didn't know where to get a shock mounting kit. So I just ordered a F-150 one, which is technically what I have, but it's different because it's been cut, axles in a different spot. So it's not, you know, exactly how an F-150 owner would do it. That's why this ended up slightly different. Now, this shock is for stock ride height um, on an F-150. Extended, it's 15 inches. Compressed, it's like 11 inches. So, or actually I think it's 10. So I have like two and a half inches of travel in each direction and from my understanding that is pretty much minimum travel i don't know if i'm gonna stick with these uh I, I just need to do more research i need to see if that is truly okay that's just from a video i saw from qa1 you know i'm sure they're not wrong um nothing crazy is gonna get done with this truck so these might be fine they might be what we need but what I did was I said, okay, I'll set them to about 13 inches. 
and I pre-configured these brackets over here. So for 13 inches in shock length, we have two and a half to compress and two and a half to extend. So after that, I pretty much just said, okay, well, let's measure this from the center of that hole up to wherever 13 is. Okay, so I have this side fully tacked. I actually just took the shock out. I should have taken a video of that slacked. But anyways, I'm going to just rinse and repeat on this side because what I'm realizing now is I actually have to drop the body. That way we're closer to actual ride height. Now this thing is empty, so it's not even going to be really that close to exact ride height. But it should be very, very close. So I do want to drop the body. I'll measure to that and I'll probably tack everything in. And I think at that point I'll leave everything tacked in. And I don't think I'll weld any of this until it's ready. You know, until the truck's complete, then I can actually weld these in. Just like that, I'm back from vacation. This Crazy to think I was uh, in Hawaii in between making this video. But anyways, I'm back, back in action now. Back to pumping out some videos so i have the bronco down you guys saw everything i did with the shocks i haven't welded them in yet i put the body down onto the chassis just so i can have closer to ride weight you're supposed to do this at full weight but we're not going to do it that way we're going to do it at full ish weight so remember do as i say not as i do but anyways i just put this on there so it could be closer to full weight than it would be without it on there so Basically, I have my shock on in there, and I'll put my other one in, but you see right there, I got it shot down straight with the laser. So what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna tack the top tabs really quickly, give them one tack, and then I'm gonna take the shock out. I don't wanna weld the whole thing with the shock in there. They say you're not supposed to even weld on the chassis with your shocks on, especially like on a race car application. It can arc, and then you'll have a little arc mark on your shock and you know you don't want that that stuff happening you don't want to be ruining your nice shocks especially if you run like some crazy baller shit but these are vikings i'll tack on the tabs up top i have these spacers cut out where they go these guys right here which are the spacing of the shock so once i have the top tabs measured i'll pull the shock out stick these in there bolt them down and then i can fully weld them out Okay, so I actually went under there with the weight of the Bronco on and then I basically just tacked the tabs. And it's crazy because you can see how much this shock actually would have compressed. So if I would have put it, you know, where I thought it should go without having the Bronco on top of it, it just extended like an inch once I left it, lifted it off. So I would have been way off if I would have done it the other way. Now I'm kind of scared once it's full weight, we might be off, thankfully. These brackets are adjustable so we can move it if it is off but i'm kind of thinking about it and honestly there shouldn't be much more weight here in the back other than a fuel cell um you know it's missing a bumper things like that but there shouldn't be more than like maybe 500 pounds more back here and i don't think it should even be that much all the rest of the weight is going up front but that doesn't mean it's not going to affect it so we'll see we'll see what happens once you know at the end of the build once it's full weight but now what i'm going to do is i'm going to take these shocks off because i don't want to weld with them on all righty folks check out my gimbal Woo -wee. this is nice but anyways shocks are fully done set in stone fully welded in Terrible welds, by the way, but hey, it is what it is. I wish I would have TIG welded this, but I opted out of that just because of a time constraint, really. So next, I think I'm going to start on fuel system. I still got to figure out what I'm going to build it for. Really, right now is what I'm going to figure out if my dad's actually going to want to put this thing on a blower or not. That way we can just build the fuel system for that. 
But yeah, it's full roller now. All suspension is done and it has a drive shaft. That's going to do it for this one. We'll see you in the next update. Thank you all for watching. Selalaan.